recorded. Well, good morning or good afternoon, wherever and whatever time it is that you happen to be watching this special edition of House and Home On Demand. We are so grateful you took some time to be with us today to talk about what to know about Wi-Fi. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Scott Fusell and I'm the Director of Education uh, for CSL Management. I'm also the host of House and Home. I'm Beta Theta Pi from Middle Tennessee State. And again, I'm so grateful you decided to spend some time with us this morning or again this afternoon. Uh, what that reveals to us is you care deeply about this experience and these facilities and the students who call them home. So again, thank you for being with us. Thank you for everything that you've been doing and everything that you are doing to prepare for a really interesting fall that we have ahead of us. So again, we're going to really tackle um, the technical infrastructure of our facilities today and talk a lot about Wi-Fi. So here's what you can expect out of today's session. We're going to be talking about bandwidth demands, talk about some key technical components that you need to be aware of, and talk about what to do right now to make sure that your facility is prepared from a bandwidth perspective and a Wi-Fi connectivity perspective for uh, this fall, because our demands are going to be a lot different this year than they ever have been before. So here's what you can expect to leave the session with. We will want you to leave here with a better understanding of some of the environmental, cultural, and educational drivers that are really requiring us to, <clears throat> excuse me, requiring us to uh, grow our bandwidth and make sure that we've got our technical game in order. Uh, we'll identify again some of the key technical components of uh, what you need in your house to make sure that you can deliver the speeds and the service that your residents are expecting. And then we want to leave here with some clarity in terms of some key questions to ask your vendors as you're uh, making sure that your IT game is intact and ready for students to move back in this fall. So as always, we want you to leave these sessions feeling like the content was relevant. Uh, we want you to leave here feeling like you feeling reminded that you're not in this alone. None of us, again, have ever prepared uh, for fraternity and sorority housing in the middle of a pandemic. So we are all in this together. So if there are ideas or feedback that you can provide that might be um, beneficial to our bigger community on this particular issue, we would love to hear them. So and finally, we want you to leave here ready, uh, a little bit more ready than you were before you spent these 20 or 30 minutes with us. So. Uh, as we all know, we are feeling major change right now, whether that's the move-in process, our, change, our cleaning and um, health and safety protocols, or maybe what's happening in the dining room or the kitchen, maybe some of the social distancing pieces we're having to incorporate in our house in terms of how we configure furniture and bedrooms. We all know that stuff is, is changing drastically. But the other thing that is changing rapidly, again, is our technical needs. So we've seen over the last few years, especially in the men's facilities, uh, this uh, the whole gaming uh, phenomenon has really taken uh, a major um, uh, has, has put a big hit on our bandwidth constraints in our facilities. So uh, that's one thing. Um, but we also know that every student is streaming two or three different devices. It seems like so. You know, it seems like if we're not gaming, we're streaming Netflix or whatever our favorite episode of The Bachelor is. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, just the entertainment and community aspects to what's driving our bandwidth needs. But we also know this year, more so than ever, we're gonna have a lot of students taking classes online. So they may be doing two or three classes during the week in the classroom, but they're also gonna be taking, most likely be taking some classes online and they'll be needing the Wi-Fi in the facility to help uh, facilitate that process. And then an issue that we've never really considered before is the idea of virtual recruitment, because we know virtual or we know recruitment is gonna look significantly different this fall than it ever has before. Probably not gonna be bringing four or 500 people through our chapter houses this year. We're probably gonna be doing a lot of virtual recruitment. So that's gonna put uh, a bit of a strain on us from a bandwidth perspective. So we want to make sure you're aware of some of those these environmental factors that are really driving our increased needs in terms of bandwidth and making sure that we've got the technical infrastructure in place to meet those needs. So. To kind of walk us through all of this today and do the heavy lifting on our presentation today in our session, the information you're going to be uh, consuming is Steve Ratterman. He's our founding partner here at CSL. He's a Sigma Nu from Indiana University, and we are thrilled to have Steve with us this morning to kind of share with you all the things that you need to be considering, uh, the questions you need to be asking as you prepare to make sure that your Wi-Fi is world class this fall. So with that being said, I'll turn it over to Steve and uh, I'll be back on the other end to wrap it up. Steve, take it away. Thanks for being with us this morning. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. So 
as Scott said, you know, one of the key things here is the, just the outright demand of what we're seeing on our internet infrastructure in all of our properties. So we felt like this was a very important topic to uh, have a little special session on to help everyone really develop uh, a, a better understanding of, of this beast we call Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is a, a component of a, a complex infrastructure that delivers internet content uh, to us uh, in our chapter houses, in our homes, on our phones. And so it's very important we understand it and understand kind of the, the key items to this. As Scott said, gaming and streaming have become huge uh, bandwidth uh, sucks, if you will, for the way that, that uh, our students operate in our houses. Uh, we very rarely have cable TV in any of our houses anymore because everybody's streaming what they want to watch on their own device. So that's a big, big part of this uh, situation, as well as, you know, Scott said, uh, gaming need, as he mentioned, it's a big issue within the fraternity houses, but we're starting to see it become an even bigger issue, if you will, uh, within the sorority houses as well, which is, uh, I know a lot of people might not believe that, but that's a, a key key thing we're starting to see. So we encourage you to take a few minutes with us and, and listen and watch about this as much as we want uh, education and uh, to be the key reason for why we're doing this. It's really the broad scope of we're all interconnected these days. We've got to, we've got to push through. Scott. So let's understand just a few of the key uh, elements and components here that you need to you need to be aware of um, your router is where the is is where the internet comes into your building so uh, this is a key item uh, sometimes we can have just the router without a firewall uh, we do not recommend that especially in fraternity and sorority houses you can do that in your home uh, maybe your office if you have a small uh, office but certainly not in a fraternity and sorority house so your, your router and your firewall are really your two, are really your two key components here that hey, you've got to be. Let's stop and start over. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it, I had it on do not disturb and it's just going like hell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that's awesome. So now I feel less bad about my Calls myself. and notifications will be silenced while your phone is locked. I'll turn, you, well, that's a great reminder. I didn't have mine on Do Not Disturb either. That's awesome. Uh, just so you know, last year when I was doing um, <coughs> videos for that fundraising campaign I was doing, I never did any of those videos in less than 10 takes. So, uh, we're still way ahead of the game right now. So um, I'll tell you what, I, I think I should be able to edit that pretty quickly. So going back. All right, you ready? Give me one second. Sure. Everything says that I am on do not disturb. Turn it off for 20 minutes. Oh shoot, I need to make sure my email's turned off too. No, nah, I can't do that. Um, hopefully nothing to come in. That won't be too disturbing. All right, sorry. All right, here we go. This conference will now be recorded. Well, good morning or good afternoon, wherever it is, and what path? Fuck a duck. This conference will now be recorded. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Scott Fusell, and I'm the director of education and the host of House and Home for CSL Management. Welcome to this special edition of House and Home On Demand, where we're going to be tackling the wonderful world of Wi-Fi and talk about all the things you need to know as we prepare for the fall. 
I do first want to start out before we even get into the content by just saying thank you uh, by showing up today and watching this video. It reveals to us that you care deeply about these facilities, you care deeply about this movement, and you care deeply about the students who call these houses home. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you for everything that you've done previously, and thank you for everything that you're doing to help prepare our facilities for this fall, because it is going to be a different, a challenging environment that we've never experienced before. So we are really grateful that you've uh, decided to spend some time with us today. So let's talk a little bit about what we want you to get out of this session. So first off, you know, again, we're going to be talking about Wi-Fi and Internet and making sure that we are meeting the bandwidth needs of our chapters uh, going into a, a different fall. So uh, we're going to be hitting on some of the things that are driving bandwidth demands. We're going to hit on some of the key technical components and talk about some of the things you can do right now to prepare for the fall to make sure that students' technical needs are going to be met. What do we want you to get out of the session? Well, we really want you to understand some of the environmental, the cultural, and educational drivers that are really increasing this need for uh, upgraded bandwidth in many cases. Uh, we want to help you identify some of these key components so you can start to troubleshoot some on your own and make sure that you understand or you have some clarity in terms of some of the questions you need to be asking uh, your providers to make sure that the facility has the bandwidth it needs to meet the needs of the students who call at home. So again, with all of our sessions, we want you to leave here feeling like the content was relevant. We want to make sure that you leave here being reminded that we are all in this together. None of us have ever gone through a pandemic while trying to manage returning shorty housing. So if you hear something today or you have something else to add to what we've delivered today, that would be a uh, benefit to our entire community, man, we would love to hear that. So please provide your feedback, your insights on things that might be working for you because we want to make sure that the greater fraternity sorority community gets those uh, those tips, tactics, strategies, and action plans. So uh, again, always want you to leave these sessions feeling ready, at least a little bit more ready than you showed up. So again, relevant, reminded, and ready. Those are three boxes we try to check on every episode of House and Home. So one of the things that we're certain of, and we've been talking about it for weeks now, is that great changes ahead of us. We've talked about how the move-in process is gonna look differently. Uh, we've talked about how the configuration of our bedrooms, dining rooms, and chapter houses is gonna need to change to really help us meet the needs of uh, social distancing guidelines. Everything in our uh, situation, everything in our facilities and in our culture really seems to be changing. So our technical infrastructure is no different. So we are going to need to um, really identify what's driving some of these changes, uh, acknowledge them, address them, and make sure that we've got the right technical infrastructure in place to meet these changing uh, environment technical needs that we're going to be seeing this fall. So what exactly is driving that? Well, the last few years, we've seen a big boost in gaming, especially on the men's side, but we're starting to see it on the women's side too. But man, gaming is a major bandwidth hog. So uh, we're starting, as, as that continues to grow in interest, uh, and we know students are gonna be spending more time inside the facilities, that's something that's gonna be driving our additional need for bandwidth. So the last few years, obviously, People are spending a lot of time on Netflix and YouTube and you know, pick a streaming service. Uh, that's also driving a huge need for bandwidth or increased bandwidth within our facilities. And then this year, unlike other uh, years, we're going to see a growing demand for classes being taken online. So it seems like a lot of universities and colleges are, t are uh, spending some time in the classroom and some time online with their classes and how they're being delivered. And we know that's going to increase the bandwidth needs in, within our facilities. So we're going to need to address that. And then unlike any other time in the history of our organizations, we're going to see recruitment go virtual. And so instead of having four or 500 people roll through our chapter houses to uh, hear about what we have to offer and how they might fit into our, uh, our organization, we're going to be doing a lot of that online. So uh, gaming, streaming, classes and recruitment, all are going to be driving major bandwidth needs and probably upgrades in many of our facilities. So to kind of walk us through this whole process and what some of the needs are, uh, what some of the key components are and what you can do right now is uh, we're really thrilled to have Steve Raderman, who's our founding partner here at CSL, sharing with us today. He's a Sigma Nu from Indiana University and we're just thrilled that he took some time out of his busy schedule. He and his brother Woody have been uh, burning the candle at both ends to help our 
team and our facilities and our clients prepare for a really uncertain fall. So, Steve, thanks so much for making some time for us, for us this morning and for our, for our audience. We're grateful to have you with us, and uh, I'll turn it over to you. Take it away. So Scott mentioned, you know, what we're seeing right now in, in the world of, of uh, paternity and sorority related to Wi-Fi is uh, just exponential increase in demand. Uh, over the past few years, it's been, uh, as he noted, gaming and streaming, uh, and it's and that has become a challenge. Uh, most, most of the properties that we work with no longer have uh, uh, cable, TV anymore, except for maybe the house director's suite, uh, because everybody's using their own device to watch what they want to watch instead of watching uh, any one thing. So it's a it's a huge change uh, just in on that side alone. Then we add in the components of recruitment and classroom, and now we're really going to stretch the capacity that we have in our houses. And that's one thing that I want us to be very aware of um, is we go into this is something we're working with our clients on and uh it's something that you need to be aware of just in general as much as i would like to think that classes and recruitment are the top two issues here um right now it's, it's still gaming and streaming i'm afraid yeah. so but that's going to flip-flop uh pretty quickly uh going into into august so scott let's go to the next slide and let's talk a little bit about components here for your uh, Wi-Fi. So the, the first component is your, your router, uh, which is where the internet comes into the house. And usually uh, you should have a firewall uh, attached to that. Um, not every fraternity and sorority house does. We recommend it. Uh, one of the reasons we would recommend it is because with your firewall, you can actually manage your uh, internet traffic. So you can provide more bandwidth for classroom study, more bandwidth for um, research in the university library, those kinds of things versus uh, streaming or um, uh, gaming. So one of the one of the things that that we've seen recently that's kind of kind of funny is they'll say, well, you know, I've, I'm taking a film class, so I have to watch these particular movies online. Um, while that may be true, uh, we think there's a lot of a lot of that's just flat out streaming and and uh, and, and enjoying some downtime. So, so the firewall does allow you to do that. It also protects your residents from uh, intrusions and attacks and that kind of thing uh, related to uh, people trying to break into their their devices and steal personal information and and those kinds of things. So firewalls are very important. Um, also, your modem uh, is another a key component to this and um, a part of the process. Again, it's, it's just moving uh, your uh, internet through the house. Um, and so where a router a lot of times will have uh, wireless capabilities, a modem generally will not. Uh, and it is really more just for the ethernet side of the equation. And then access points uh, are critical. Uh, as well, um, if your access points are more than three or four years old, they're probably not uh, as robust as they need to be to carry the current band bandwidth speeds that you're going to be required to have. Uh, so we're going to uh, you need to really think about uh, reviewing those because if they if they cannot carry at least four or five hundred uh, megahertz across their uh, their network then you're not going to be able to completely uh, satisfy the needs of your of your tenants. So uh, the other thing that we'll talk about in a few minutes is the low voltage cable uh, that carries the internet through the house to the, to the access points or to the ethernet po uh, ports in the walls. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes as well, Scott. So how do we ensure that we have full bandwidth going into the fall? So the first thing we've got to do is understand what is what is our current speed. Normally, if you look at your uh, provider bill, it will notate on there what that speed is. 
uh, we still see uh, in some places properties that are still down around in the, the 50 to 100 uh, meg range, which is really pretty low uh, by today's standards. Uh, most houses need to be at up in the 300, 400, 500 range. If you, if you get a gig, that's even better. Uh, but you need to understand what that current speed is and what your options are for upgrading. Not every provider is expanding their compa their capacity in every area at the same speed. So we we were working on it for a client the other day and, and the current provider can only offer 100 meg speed or bandwidth. And the uh, there's a new provider in town that's got a gig. And this is an area that's been notorious for poor internet service. Uh, which is amazing for a major state university. So, uh, so you'll see that on occasion. So if you can't get what you need with your current provider, be willing to look around and explore what your options are otherwise, uh, and buy as much as you can get. Uh, if you can get a gig, buy a gig, because you're going to use it, your, your students are going to use it. Um, it it's in the prices for the gig uh, bandwidth have come way down. Um, and, and know what infrastructure you have in place. So you're probably going to need to have uh, an IT uh, vendor come out and take a look at what you have and what you probably need to be doing. They can look at your equipment. They can tell you how old it is. They can tell you whether it's robust enough to carry current, uh, uh, current bandwidth speeds. And they can also tell you whether or not your, your license agreements are up to date. In many cases, uh, a lot of this equipment now comes with licenses so they can keep it updated uh, for you uh, and give you the latest technical advances. Uh, but if you don't keep your your uh, uh, subscriptions updated, that's not going to happen. Scott? So um, know what to ask. You know, a lot of us, we, we would somebody walks in the house we look at them and go i don't know i just need you to fix it right so um but this is a, a place where a little education goes a long way in helping us to determine exactly what is going on and what we need to be doing as we noted what are the speeds actually coming into the house uh you know you you can buy one thing right you i can buy 400 uh, meg and it may be uh, but I may only be getting uh, 150 or 200 coming actually coming in because I'm downstream from other users and they're they're pulling more Wi-Fi out of the out of this uh, system than I am at the moment. So I don't actually I'm not actually getting what I'm paying for. So uh, no, the IT person can generally uh, take a look at your uh, where where your Internet's coming in, they can plug into it and tell you exactly what the speeds are coming in into the into the property. And then that, that way, you know that you're getting what you're paying for uh, right up front and then know what's coming out of the modem or the router or the firewall. So, you know, one of the big challenges is, is that sometimes, you know, modems and routers and firewalls all get hiccups like everything else does. And they just need to be turned on and turned back, turned off and turned back on to get them to reset and actually run like they're supposed to. Other times that doesn't work and we need to make other changes. So, you know, so then one other component to this is that the system that we have, the, the components, the router, the, the firewall, the modem, whatever it might be, may not be robust enough to carry the um, bandwidth that we're buying. And if that happens, it's just going to hit that. It's like hitting a wall and it's not going to go anywhere because it just can't push it out fast enough. So um, understand that, you know, we got to understand what the speed is coming into the house and what the speed is going out into the into the property. And th that will give you a, a very clear idea of whether or not you're actually delivering the speed you're paying for. It is. A, no, I've, I've already talked a little bit about the um, firewall, but um, but look at, at whether your subscriptions are up to date again on that. Some access points now have subscriptions. 
So if you're having some issues, your subscription may be uh, uh, expired and you just need to update it so you can uh, get back on, on course with what's going on. Also, your access points. Uh, you know, this is where the, the wireless side of the equation comes in. And we want you to make sure that you, uh, you have those looked at. Uh, most of, motor, most of the uh, access points that are out there uh, that we're running into um, haven't been updated in several years. And that's a big problem because bandwidths have ex uh, just exploded in the last few years. And most of these modems are meant for 100 uh, megabytes, really, which was the big number two or three years ago. And now we're looking at a gig, and there's just no way these modems can handle, the, these access points can handle that. So make sure they're working properly and make sure that they're not outdated because otherwise you're just not going to get uh, be able to deliver what you need there. Scott? Yeah, I think that's great guidance, Steve. Like the, uh, you can have a gig coming into the house, but you know, if you don't have the equipment that's built for that, you know, that's where we talk about bottlenecks, right? So right. if there's a cap on the, on the top of the Coke bottle, then that, you know, it doesn't matter what's inside the bottle. So it's, uh, no. so, you know, it's, it's interesting, oftentimes we see, oh my gosh, so-and-so provider has, uh, they're offering a gig for X amount of dollars per month, let's go get it. Well, that's great if you go get it, but if you don't have the uh, the equipment piece of it dialed up and ready to go, then it doesn't really matter how much bandwidth is coming in if you don't have the equipment that can can meet the needs so uh, or can meet what's coming in. So and that, and that, and that counts in your own personal home as well as it does absolutely in your business as well as it does in a fraternity story house. It's yeah, you know, you can buy it, but if they don't bring you a new a new router or a new modem in the door, it ain't gonna do you any good. That's right. Uh, that's right. So you know, let's also look at some, a couple of the other issues that you need to review with your IT. Uh, vendor and one of the things that we're seeing a lot of right now is um, that the, the the low voltage wiring uh, between the the firewall and router and the access points uh, or the ethernet ports is not up to par so most of the internet uh, most of the cabling uh, for internet was put into our houses probably almost 20 years ago now. I would say in around 2003, 4, 5 was when we saw this push to go uh, to wire our houses and have ethernet ports everywhere because everybody was bringing their computers and they had ethernet ports. And five years later, nobody was using an ethernet port because we were all going to use Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi yeah. was the, was a great uh, disconnector, if you will. You could pick up your computer and walk anywhere. Uh, we now operate off of, of tablets and phones and so on and so forth. Uh, I've got a, a my my cell phone has got more memory in it than the first three computers I ever owned. So you know it's it's a it's amazing what Wi-Fi has done for us, but it is not the end all do all. And you still have to, and even if it, if if you are lean on Wi-Fi, uh, you have to reach out and or with your, your wireless, you have to reach out and and have someone look at your cable to make sure it's either Cat five or Cat six, preferably Cat six, because the old low voltage wiring that we used to move uh, internet across. The, our houses on wire is not going to cut it anymore. Again, it's another one of those bottlenecks because the technology just isn't in the wire. And the new Cat 6 has got incredibly uh, good wire. Uh, it's a lot of fiber, mostly fiber, if not all fiber. And so you've got to go look at that and have that pull through your house so that you're getting the actual uh, proper speeds and have everything that you need uh, in there to, for that. Um, the other thing we would suggest is make sure that you're you're checking uh, your Ethernet ports if you have them. Uh, we would suggest that you maybe don't need Ethernet ports in every room, but you need them throughout the house, especially in your study your study lounges and those areas. If you have them uh, already in your rooms, 
we would suggest that you make sure they're working and they're working at the proper speeds. The reason for this is, is that what we've learned uh, over the last two years really is that um, as all these other demands for the, the wireless uh, capacity in the house get sucked up by gaming or by um, streaming and whatnot, that the most stable way for our students to study and take tests is if we have an ethernet port for them to plug into. Uh, now some computers and tablets don't even have ethernet ports anymore and they, the students may have to go get a, a, a USB convert, converter that will allow them to, to do that. Um, but you know that's something that even the universities are saying, encouraging the students Plug into Ethernet before you start a test because otherwise they have to start these tests over. If there's a technical issue or a problem, it's it's just a challenge. So so those are critical in where in in uh, our fraternity and sorority houses today that we take a look at those. Scott, yeah. yeah, that's great, and it's it's funny you made me think about it. even when outside the tests you're thinking I'm even thinking about our Zoom meetings and our go to meeting uh, workshops we've been doing recently. Uh, when we're having an issue, it's generally because of the Wi-Fi, and we can usually resolve that issue by just having somebody hardwired in uh, via Cat uh, Cat Six or whatever. So it's a or right. Ethernet rather. And um, so yeah, there are a lot of benefits to having that option available. Yeah, it's great to be able to grab my Surface or my my MacBook Pro and and go and sit in the chapter room while I can do my stuff uh, wirelessly. But if it's something you really need to be uh, foolproof, having that wired option is not a bad idea. So no, great, no. great, great reminder there. So here's some other ideas for you to take uh, a look at and think about as you're as you're working through this. Again, uh, connect uh, the Ethernet, as we said, for test and or Zoom meetings. Um, I, we anticipate that a lot of chapter meetings, uh, just like recruitment, may be virtual this year. Uh, so, um, in, in committee meetings as well. So, be uh, be sure that that even for Zoom and stuff like that, as Scott said, we're finding that whether it's Zoom, GoToMeeting, Web, uh, WebEx, whatever it might be, whatever platform you're using, uh, it's always going to be better over the Ethernet than it is over Wi-Fi. Uh, ask members to limit their, their connected devices when possible. So, you know, most students today are coming to class, to campus with at least two to three uh, devices that have to be connected to the internet. They've got their computer, their laptop, their tablet, their phone, um, uh, you know, a Kindle. It could be any number of devices that are uh, why that that are, are sucking up our our wireless. Uh, bandwidth. So ask them to limit their no, the number and turn it off when they're not using it. Uh, this helps immensely. So, you know, somebody could have their tablet sitting there and they haven't picked it up in three days. Well, guess what? It's just still sitting there running in the background, eating up bandwidth. So uh, those are the kinds of things that we want to make sure that we're also taking a look at as we move through uh, through this. So it's, it's a lot of, like, as we're going to hear a lot, and you've heard us say in our other webinars, uh, you know, member courtesy is going to be critical this year. Everybody's got to look out for each other. Everybody's got to take care of each other like we never have before. And this is just another small way that they can do that. So yeah. just, you know, encourage them. And then, and then work with the, uh, with your chapter leadership to, uh, put in uh, restrictions on streaming and gaming during study hours. So from say seven to 10 or seven to 11 at night, uh, maybe it, during a period in the afternoon from say two to four, uh, we ask people not to, uh, to, to stream or game. Uh, that would help uh, immensely with everything that's going on. So. Uh, those, those again, it's a common courtesy. It's one way that we can help our brothers and sisters to be successful in school, and it's something we need to think seriously about. So, so 
So just in closing, you know, Scott mentioned the game's changed, right? I mean, this is not going to be your, your typical fall. We all know that. Um, we're all pedaling as fast and as furiously as we can to be ready for it. This is just another area where we need to be prepared. Uh, you know, the, the needs for Wi-Fi have been changing immensely over the last couple of years, and it's just going to grow exponentially. Uh, especially this year as we start seeing more and more of the online uh, classroom experience, uh, whether we like it or not, that's kind of where we're headed, at least in the in the short term. So let's take an afternoon, meet with someone at your house, make sure you've got what, the, what you need uh, so that uh, when your students come back, uh, they know you're prepared, they're prepared, and they can have a successful fall. And this is another it's kind of, I think, really, I think internet kind of like cleaning is going to be one of those critical things yeah. uh, parents are going to be looking at when they're bringing their children back to school is, you know, are, you know, are you going to have a stable internet? Are you going to clean enough that my child's not going to get sick? What are you, you know, what are you doing to protect my, my child and help them be successful in their academic career. So those are all critical things that we need to be looking at as we move forward. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, could not agree more, Steve. It's a, again, this is another marketing opportunity for us. Uh, you know, we've got a great story to tell, whether it's the work that we've done previously to prepare for this fall or the work that we're doing uh, to make sure that we are ready to go. I think we've got a really wonderful story to tell. And this is just one more chapter in that story. So uh in creating an environment where your students or um uh somebody's son or daughter uh can can thrive uh, academically and fraternally so uh again um big opportunities here for us so uh, a lot of changes but a lot of opportunities for us to really uh to shine in this uh this uncertain uh uncertain time so all that being said thank you so much for spending some time with us today uh and thank you to steve for uh, for carving out some time in his really busy schedule. So again, know that we're super grateful for everything that you've been doing and everything that you will do going forward to help create uh, a really wonderful environment for our students to move back in this fall. Uh, again, thanks so much for making some time for us this morning and uh, we will see you next time on the next Allison Home. Take care, everybody. Thanks.